welcome to our Monarch Butterfly Coaster set. This is a series of coasters that we're doing that you can change. Um, so this little stand just has these leaning in here. We're going to have ornaments and leaves and grapes and all kinds of things. And this is the Monarch version. This is a super easy, easy, easy way to paint butterflies. I used jumbo daubers and um, stencils, multi-layer stencils to achieve all the details. So I was able to put all the lines and all the details without tracing a pattern. Um, absolutely no base coating besides daubing with a sponge. Um, super, super easy. This would be a great project for grandkids or Girl Scout troops or school classes or quick um, painting party kind of things where you get together and just you know do a quick project. So I hope you enjoy the lesson and it's a lot of fun. All right, we're going to be painting some coasters. I've got a whole bunch of different kinds of shapes of coasters. Um, and so what we want to talk about, what's the one thing that it, we need to do to coasters to make them safe to use as coasters is we have to make them water tight. Okay, so what's the best way to do it? With cork sealer. Cork sealer is, um, is actually what people who do duck decoys um, seal their ducks with and then they float them in water for, you know, hours and hours. So cork sealer is the perfect, perfect medium for us. So um, according to our directions, we're going to apply two or more liberal coats over the cork, or in this case, over our MDF. Um, and then I love this line, allow to cure for 48 hours before submerging into water. So these ducks are going to be floating around in water and they're going to be perfectly safe. So we know that this is going to help us keep our coasters perfectly safe. The way I'm going to apply it is I'm going to use my mushroom sponge. Okay, just gonna get that all on there nice and nice and even. And then when I go on my edges, I can use that same mushroom sponge. I'm gonna have to get in there with a little brush, but I can do the same, just smooshing it with the edge of the um, mushroom sponge. And that's gonna allow me to get all my edges done nice and evenly. And then I'll just make sure that I look for drips on either side. And the mushroom sponge comes in two sizes. The little size might be a little bit nicer for going around the edges, but I already have this side, this size side dirty. The other thing that's neat about the mushroom sponge, and this is I think what makes them just absolutely a kick butt item, is that you can form it to round things like finials and stuff like that because of that nice little scrunchy area right there. Very versatile tool. And you'll notice here, I allowed some of my paint to harden. It is perfectly acceptable if you go on in and just give it a little haircut if you let something dry and then um, peel that off and it'll still do a good job. Okay, now I've got my, my stuff painted on both sides and I want, want to let them dry. So I'm going to use these little painter pyramids and they actually have, because they're made out of this nylon material, this will not mar into anything that's fresh paint. So you can actually put fresh painted items on there and then it'll hold it steady while the air gets under and over to get a completely dry package. And I wanted to share, we're going to be doing um, these with an overlay stencil. Which, wait till you see how fast and easy this is. It's just a snap. And it's going to go on, get it out here. It's going to go on this base. And it's going to be open. So then these guys just sit in here. And they'll be a little bit tighter. I like the little bit of lean. Um, but they're going to just sit in here and they'll be open for display. So they're going to be art on your table. Um, it might be a really super idea because we are doing a quick and easy technique with the stencil to go ahead and paint backs and fronts. And then you'll have just a reversible coaster. And you could, there, we've got um, butterfly recipe cards on the website and that gives you all different kinds of colors that you can use with these um, two part stencils. So you could do, you know, gold ones on the front and blue on the back or whatever your favorite colors are. Okay, as with all things, when we first start doing something, we always like learn some stuff. Here's what I've learned, is if I squinch that in there really well and just kind of pat that on, not worrying about drips and things like that, I'll get a nice kind of evenly heavy, if you will, um, well applied coat. Okay. And then when I've gotten all the way around, I'll go and just give myself the coat and smooth out any juicy stuff. It's a lot faster. You could let the edges dry or you can get your hands in it and, and um, do the whole thing at once. The other thing I like about the uh, mushroom sponge as I'm doing this, 
I don't have my nitrile gloves on, but I should. Okay, but while I'm doing this, um, it keeps my hand out of the medium because I've got this handle on the, on the um, sponge. So that is super duper helpful. And I really should have gloves on now that I've decided to go ahead and do all my shapes at one time. But I don't, and I'm going to have to wash my hands anyway, so I'm just going to go with this. Okay, the way you clean out your sponge is you just squish it under cold water. But I wanted to show you, um, I washed my hands with heavy-duty dishwashing soap. And this will come off eventually, but this is why you wear nitrile gloves. The nitrile gloves are lifesavers. They are latex-free, so if you have allergies like I do, you don't have to worry about it. And they stand up to stain. I don't know if you've ever stained using regular gloves, but then the fingertips like fall off. So these are actually chemical resistant as well, so that they stand up to all the things. So these will work for all of your tasks. If you get any raising of grain, just use a light sanding disc. Yeah, that's perfect. These are multi-sided, so this is the smooth, the smoothest, and it's really smooth. Then this is rougher. You can hear the, the grate. And then there is another set that is like 160 or something like that. Great. So this is 400, 200, 100, and then like the 60. That way you can use them. And they're actually super durable. Um, I go through maybe, maybe, maybe two sets a year. And um, that's with me. I don't know if you're aware, but like I paint a lot of things. So um, they're super durable. All right, I really like having the edges just be uh, this kind of dark color. I don't want to trim them out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my um, Jumbo Dauber, and I'll pounce off over here just to get rid of any excess. And I'll do a couple of light coats, and I'll just kind of flip towards that edge. And when I get in the middle, I'll just do it evenly. Okay, and then I'll do all the sides. And this is my undercoat so that my yellow doesn't have to be base coated over and over again. I totally promised that we would have an easy butterfly. Okay, when doing these coasters, the one thing that I wanted was that water resistance. So I decided to go ahead with patio paints. They're actually made for um, all kinds of surfaces, terracotta, concrete, wood, etc. So these are great for birdhouses and anything that you want to take into your outdoor environment. So um, the neat thing is, is the very first line here, it says weather and water resistance. So you've got this, and I know for a fact my stepping stones have been outside in the weather for a long time. And so this is the perfect way to have a coaster that's going to have water pooling on it, um, is to use your patio paints. So I've done a couple of coats of pumpkin, and I've dried with a blow dryer, and now I just have to let them cool. All right, we're going to do this all in one kind of interesting little step. I'm going to pounce my butterfly to wet it. Okay. Make sure it's nice and coated before you do this part. Then I'm going to blot on a paper towel and I'm going to pick up on one side my yellow color. Okay, and I'm going to take this right out from the middle. I'm going to walk up and down straight up the middle and then I'm going to start walking it into my butterfly. And I might repeat that in just a minute. I'll fade that line. Okay. We'll go. Maybe we'll go ahead and repeat that right now. Walk it out. And then I'll use the middle of my sponge as the blending area. And then the back of the sponge to clean up. Okay. And I'm trying to decide if I want to do the other side first. I guess since I'm doing wet and wet, I should. Okay, so then we've got some tiger lily. That is going to come down from the edges. And drag into the middle. Okay. And then we'll go into... Do we want to repeat the tiger lily? Maybe we'll repeat one more time. Yeah, I think it's so close to the base color that I don't think it matters. And we'll go into a spot of, is it holly? Very red. And we want to blend that on our, we'll call this a brush, right? 
Oops, a two blotted. And we'll bring that out, but not as far as the orange color. And then we'll just kind of pounce back and forth between our colors. I think I'm just a little bit advancing into my yellow, so that's easy enough to handle. I can go back into my yellow and I can bring that out. Okay, so look at that beautiful blend, straight across. Okay, so I'm gonna hold my um, stencil down in sections and I'm gonna use a brush that I'm going to pounce off over here. I'd rather do two thin coats and have it be clean than to do one heavy coat and have it be all base coated. And because we're doing black, it shouldn't be too, too bad. I like these dome brushes for stippling because they, um, they don't tend to bend out and under as much as the flat ones. Okay, it looks like we've made this big black thing, but watch. Da, da, da. Beautiful. How easy is that? I cannot tell you how many times I've made butterfly, butterfly projects and have absolutely bored doing all this liner detail and stuff. And it gives us our spots to put our little white dots. It's awesome. And we have one more step to go, and we've got our, um, our body. All right, now we lay the butterfly body on there. And just give it its detail. That'll cover up that unblended center section that I left, yellow. Okay, and ta-da! How fun is that? Okay, and then with my round brush, I'm just going to add in some of our monarchy type details. You can add some extras if you want. And that just gives it its awesome glow. Okay, I've got my butterfly collection going on here. I've got my short bright brush and just a little bit of water. This, these colors don't float superiorly well, so um, they're not going to take a whole lot of water. Um, but I think that this will work out just fine. Just a little bit of water. Oops. Just accent our black just a little bit. Oops. I'm having way more whoopses than, than yays here. Okay, maybe we can just go swoosh, swoosh, swoosh across the bottom just to give it a little bit more detail. 